Joining us now, member of the House Armed Services Committee, Democratic Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan. She's a former CIA analyst, also a candidate for United States Senate in Michigan. Congresswoman, thank you for being with us. Uh, you've served in the CIA. Uh, you know the world very well. You know the strategic importance that NATO holds. What is your analysis of the last couple of days, which is Finland is in NATO, Sweden now on its way to being in NATO, and Ukraine with a promise that eventually, somewhere down the road, the next few years, that country too will join NATO. What does it all add up to for you? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's extraordinary. And um, we've been talking about expanding NATO for a long time um, to those Nordic countries, and it was never really possible. It wasn't They weren't interested. We weren't in that place to do it. And now, because of Putin's failed invasion you know, into Ukraine, we're sitting here. So I, it's not a great day to be Vladimir Putin sitting in Moscow and watching the last couple of days, which should make us all happy. So, uh, Congresswoman, a group of far right-wing House Republicans are trying to use the annual military budget bill to kill America's aid to Ukraine. They're also looking to use budget talks to end military funding on issues like travel-related costs for abortion services and medical care for transgender service members. I know you're aware of all of this, but with our president showing such strength on the world stage, um, and then this happening here at home. What do you say to Senator Tommy Tuberville about the military promotions he's holding up, starting just right there? Yeah, so I would say three things. So usually when we go to debate and pass a Pentagon budget, the NDAA, um, it's a pretty bipartisan thing. I'm on that committee. It's a bunch of people who generally care about the national security of the United States. We have a lot of bipartisan amendments in particular. Um, and I, I think what's really happened overnight is we've seen the far right of the Republican Party take over and really put forward some pretty insane amendments. One, as you said, is completely banning aid to Ukraine. So think about that split screen of what we saw yesterday with uh, Biden, you know, welcoming new members in, unity, Zelensky next to him, and then you have the Republicans on this side saying, we want to ban all aid and we do not want to defend that democracy. We don't like any of that that's going on. That's number one. Number two was ending affirmative action for our military service academies, for our officers. Military, the enlisted military is the most diverse institution in the country, and they don't want to have a diverse officer corps. Think about that. Even though the Supreme court said it was okay to maintain affirmative action in our service academies. And then lastly, as you alluded to, whether it's Senator Tuberville, it's far right folks here in Congress, they are obsessed with this idea that we must end all abortions for all women everywhere in every corner of the country. Right now focused on service women, women who have signed up to serve their country and who are serving in a state that they have no choice over. They are placed in a place like Texas or a place like Alabama that's on a full ban of all abortions. And what right. they want to do is say, we're going to hold up all military promotions. We're going to hold up the Pentagon budget because we're obsessed with a federal ban on abortion. I mean, it's unbelievably insulting in so many ways um, and bad for our military. Um, curious what you think about the testimony that we heard yesterday, FBI Director Christopher Wray appearing before the House Judiciary Committee yesterday. It was about five hours fielding questions from some of the same members of Congress who have recently called for his impeachment. Despite being appointed by Donald Trump, and as we all know, he's a registered Republican, Republican lawmakers are baselessly accusing Ray of using the FBI to target those with conservative beliefs, including the former president himself. Director Ray, of course, was having none of it. Take a listen. There is a two-tier justice system that has been weaponized to persecute people based on their political beliefs, and that you have personally been weapon that you have personally worked to weaponize the FBI against conservatives. I would disagree with your characterization of the FBI, and certainly your description of my own approach. Uh, the idea that I'm biased against conservatives uh, seems somewhat insane to me, uh, given my own personal background. You preside over the FBI that has the lowest level of trust in the FBI's history. 
People trusted the FBI more when J. Edgar Hoover was running the place than when you are. And the reason is because you don't give straight answers. Respectfully, Congressman, in your home state of Florida, the number of people applying to come work for us and devote their lives working for us is over up over 100 percent. January 6, I mean, was a beyond a weaponization of government. It was a nuclearization of government against the government. I think Tucker Carlson and some of the members' colleagues on the other side of the aisle have said that Ray Epps was a secret government agent in helping uh, encourage uh, this, this crime so as to make the president look bad. Uh, do you have any knowledge of Ray Epps being a secret government agent? Uh, no. Uh, I will say this notion that somehow the violence at the Capitol on January 6th was part of some operation orchestrated by FBI sources and agents uh, is ludicrous. I want to use and examine the case of the Mar-a-Lago documents because it's been used uh, by the former president as a pitying moment, uh, as though he has somehow been victimized. I don't want to be commenting on the pending case, but I will say that there are specific rules about where to store classified information and that those need to be stored in a SCIF, a secure compartmentalized information facility. And uh, in my experience, ballrooms, bathrooms, and bedrooms are not SCIFs. I wish all Americans could really take the time to look at that questioning and, and, and understand the hypocrisy of House Republicans or even corruption. If not, if, if they're not stupid, then they're corrupt. And I think that Director Ray and, and many others revealed that yesterday. But how do you feel about, especially as a former member of the CIA, about this constant effort by House Republicans to undermine our intelligence agencies? Yeah, I mean, they, they've gone after law enforcement whenever law enforcement tries to uphold the law against their friends. I mean, they have no moral compass when it comes to the rule of law. It's just they're bad if they go after my guy. And it's hard to miss that all of these folks have been defending people like Donald Trump and people that came into the building that we're standing in right now on January 6th. So uh, they've lost their, their authority or moral center on this. And if you want to know why the opinion of the FBI has gone down, it's because people like those speaking that we just heard from have been using their leadership position, using that role to, to demean and go after law enforcement. And I, I just, I think that the idea, especially when I hear these same people turn around and want to go to a, you know, stand next to a bunch of police officers and thank them when they've done something good, the hypocrisy is hmm. um, very clear and the performance art, right? And every single one of those folks, I'm sure, are fundraising off of their little speech that they gave yesterday, right? So it's performance art, it's hypocrisy, it's believing in conspiracy theater theories, and it's using leadership for bad instead of good. Um, and it's just the opposite of what the country needs right now. Well, it's also the, um, you know, adding to that list, a promulgation of disinformation. How does, um, how does members of Congress, how, how, how do they push, how do you push back against that? The conspiracy theories being woven into the fabric of the American narrative. I mean, look, we, 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 of course, do our best. There were people who spoke um, in defense of law enforcement and the FBI yesterday in that same committee. Um, we do it all the time. I can't tell you the number of times in a place like Michigan, the FBI has been the difference between plots to kidnap and kill our senior leaders, to attack our mm. synagogues and our mosques. I mean, uh, most members of Congress interact with law enforcement every single day and try to lift up the things that they have done to protect us. But um, there's only so much you can do when they're watching a different TV channel than your viewers, when they're watching different media and hearing those messages from positions of authority, leadership telling them to believe in those things. It's just the absolute opposite of what we, at least in the intelligence and military communities, were trained to do as leaders. Congresswoman Alyssa Slotkin of Michigan, thank you, as always, for being on the show this morning. We appreciate it.